Sky Television recently produced a program, Men in the Mirror, which was about the surprising similarities between those two disastrous prime ministers, Kevin Rudd and Malcolm Turnbull. And it was a very good program and very interesting. It should be followed up by a program about the role of the media in getting them into the prime ministership, both of them, and also the role of the media in bringing down Prime Minister Howard and Prime Minister Abbott. And that would be a very interesting program. You see, when the commentariat, even the conservative commentariat is nearly unanimous, but holds a different view to the rest of Australia, the ordinary people, the rank and file, always put your money on the rank and file. They're much more likely to be correct than the commentariat, than the mainstream media are. Remember, for example, the referendum in 1999, when the commentary of the media were unanimous for the Turnbull Politicians Republic. Remember also the 2019 election in Australia, when they all said that Mr. Shorten would soon be Prime Minister. And remember also the 2016 presidential election, when they were all sure, sure that Hillary Clinton would become president, and also the 2019 election, because I have no doubt, and I think the evidence shows this, that election was won by Donald Trump, but it was rigged so that it appeared that Mr. Biden won the election. And that's an interesting point, because this brings us to the situation of America, the situation of the United States, particularly with the threat of war. Nobody wants a war, but as one of the major officials of the Morrison government said, the drums of war are beating. And it may well be that once again, we may need to send our warriors to fight yet another war. Nobody wants that, but the best, the best way to avoid war is to prepare, prepare for it. And that's a very, true statement. The situation in America is not so good. It's very clear that in the lead up to the election, the power broker in the Democratic Party, President Obama in particular, decided that the most likely person that might win would be Joe Biden, although he had never achieved anything in his long period as a politician. Although he had once been a strong segregationist, although his cognitive problems were becoming apparent, it was pretty clear that he would be more likely to be a successful Democrat candidate rather than any of the others. And it was obvious and reported at the time, but mainly ignored by the mainstream media, that he had agreed that he would implement a far left program, something closer to Venezuela than the normal American program, but he would not be mentioning that in the election campaign. So everybody would think, particularly to those who didn't want to vote for Donald Trump, they could vote for Joe Biden and he'd be a safe pair of hands, if uninspiring, on the presidency. Well, we've seen what's happened. He's clearly implementing a very far left program. The problem particularly is in the field of foreign affairs and defense. And you have to be worried. You have to be worried by the aggressive, increasingly aggressive behavior of the Communist Party of China. And in particular, their trampling of human rights in that country of the Muslim Uyghurs, which seems to attract little protest among the world's Muslims. 
but also in relation to the way in which they have treated the Christians and the Falun Gong, and even going so far as to use using people, capturing healthy young people and taking away their organs to be sold on the international market, thereby, of course, killing them. And that has been proven, was proven before the London Tribunal. This is a disgraceful government. It is an evil government, perhaps not as evil, but certainly evil as Mao's was, as Stalin's was, and as Hitler's was. So we have to be very beware of them. Now, there's a lot of talk of appeasement. Will the Biden government be an appeasement government? Certainly, the Obama-Biden government was. They appeased Russia. They appeased Tehran. And were quite prepared to turn it into a nuclear power, as everybody knew their concessions would be. And they gave way to the communists in Beijing on every important point, including the annexation of the South China Sea. Saying a few words, but doing absolutely nothing about it. So there is talk of appeasement, but remember that appeasement essentially involved British politicians in the 30s, Chamberlain and Halifax, genuinely believing that they had last got an agreement from Hitler and that this would ensure peace in our time, peace in our time. And of course, if they had looked closely at Mein Kampf, they would have realized that this was never Hitler's intention and that he was lying when he said that the Sudetenland and Czechoslovakia was his last territorial ambition in Europe. It certainly wasn't. He wanted to conquer the whole of Europe, perhaps the world. In any event, appeasement was popular. When Chamberlain announced to the House of Commons that he would be going to Munich to talk peace with Hitler, the House of Commons gave him a standing ovation. Only Churchill and his closest colleagues remained seated and refused to give that standing ovation. And when Chamberlain came back from Munich with a piece of paper, waving it and saying, this guarantees peace in our time, he was praised and lauded by the media and by the politicians. And it's understandable that people would wish to avoid war and would think that this was, if it could be obtained, the way of avoiding yet another terrible war. Well, the problem is not so much of appeasement in Washington. The problem in Washington, the problem in the United States is that Beijing has dazzled big business in America, it's dazzled the entertainment industry, it's dazzled Hollywood, it's dazzled some of the big sports, particularly basketball, it's dazzled the, the mainstream media, and the Democrat Party, and some in the Republican Party, dazzled them by the size of the market in communist China and the promise of unbelievable riches if you give way, if you concede, if you enter into agreements with Beijing. And many have. Many have lined their pockets from the wealth of the ordinary Chinese people they have disregarded the future of their country and the future of the West. But the worst thing, perhaps, is that there is compelling evidence that the president may be involved in this, because before the election, with the Hunter Biden laptop and evidence given by very reliable witnesses to the media about that, it's very clear that over an extensive period of time, there has been a Biden family, Inc. Biden family, a, a major entrepreneurial activity which has sold to plutocrats in various countries, including the Ukraine, and worse, including communist China, has sold access and influence at the very heart of the American administration while Joe Biden was a senator 
and then a president. This is being investigated, this laptop is being investigated by the FBI. They're the same people who, knowing that it was completely untrue, insisted on proceeding with the investigation into President Trump's relationship with Russia based on a fraudulent document, the Steele dossier, prepared for Mrs. Clinton, paid for by Mrs. Clinton and the Democratic Party to win the 2060 election. Nothing in it has been proved or can be proved. And the FBI, knowing this, still fraudulently, fraudulently obtained secret, secret court warrants to listen to the Trump campaign, something which has never occurred before. When President Trump realized, after he'd attained the presidency and was in office for some time, that he had been, his campaign, had been subject to wiretaps and he announced that. This was greeted with ridicule by the mainstream media, including the mainstream media of Australia. So take no notice of them, it actually happened and that has become obvious from some investigations which have taken place so far. But there is, <clears throat> there is an FBI investigation into the laptop. We don't know how far that's going and given the politicization of the FBI, it probably won't go far at all. If this had happened in Australia, if there were suspicions that the Australian Prime Minister was actively involved, had been actively involved in selling influence to Beijing, there'd at least be a royal commission. And there ought to be in the United States a special council of impeccable qualities created to investigate the role of the president and the Hunter Biden laptop. That there hasn't been a call for this in the American media, the mainstream media, that there hasn't been a call for this in Congress is testimony to the decline in the integrity of American institutions. But the important thing for us in Australia is to what extent does the Chinese dictator, Xi, have influence in Washington? To what extent can we rely on the current president of the United States to rise to the situation if, for example, the communists decide to take Taiwan? And this is a terrible situation and something we have to be very aware of in Australia. And let us hope that the Australian government is quietly suggesting to politicians, Republican politicians in the United States, that it's time to appoint a special counsel to finally decide whether President Biden had in fact compromised himself through the Biden family offerings of selling off access and influence for vast sums of money to various foreign plutocrats. We live in a dangerous world. One thing is sure, it is time indeed for Australians to take back their country. Mm -hmm.